Bucket of Compassion had been the name of the game writ large across the history of Canada from day one in education, what would that country look like? Word, what it would happen if compassion had as much currency in schools as standardization or accountability or rules and deadlines? What would happen if that was the name of the game? Look at all all Aboriginal people inside there. They talk about the scrum, and then they say again, "You people are so different." Well, in reality, the drum is around the world. You can go to the four corners of this world, and you will find that they have a drum. They may not understand it; they may have lost it, but you'll see still evidence of that drum there. But for our people, we still have an opportunity to be able to learn what that drum represents and what it means from our elders. But maybe in us talking, then it would help these other people that sit within the circle to have a greater understanding of their drum. The healing circle. So that one tends to get a bit more heavier. And then that one usually um, requires all the medicines that, that the smudgy and having that smudge going the whole time when people are sharing. Um, there can be a lot of like crying or laughing or yelling. Oh, our kids go, okay, who am I? Finally they go, okay. You know, a guy like me comes up and says, who are you? What nation are you from? What's your history? Who are your people? One of the first things they ask you in Indian country is whose kid are you? He can read that somebody is trying to put him inside of a box, but when he's at home, he's just human. When he's in his classroom, because of his teacher, he is human. You, as my kids, you still matter to me. I still know your names. I still know your gifts. I know what you're good at. I know what you like. I know what's up with your mom. I know why your cousin's being a jerk. Like, I know everything. Because it's sincere, and it's the relationship that we build with each other. And when he has the subtle ability to just be, that is when you find that a person has or feels the freedom to be in spirit. Your role of parent, mother, father, all that, I mean, it, it's a serious job. And how are we going to get into there? So what I'd like to show you is some of the strategies that I use in a program that I do called Community Action. Uh, it's been running for 23 years. And what this is really saying is that comic books aren't new, graphic novels aren't a new form of communicating. It's actually probably the oldest form of communicating. So uh, wall paintings, hieroglyphs, you know, all these different kinds of ancient <coughs> communications. Because before we had words, we, we kind of just, we kind of described our emotions through pictures. Right? And so that's, that's how old they are. And that's one of the reasons why people say they work so well in the classroom. Like, this program has changed my life in ways that I could just go on and on all day about, right? So today, I'm here to tell you about our gardening and diabetes mentorship program. We can keep in touch with my Aboriginal background. And kids nowadays are beginning to forget the importance of our heritage. And over the past few years, you know, my sister and I have experienced like many hardships and struggles and it has made it, it, it was, which made it difficult to have a positive look on life sometimes. Just being in horticulture helps us give us, us hope for a better future. When a child is in spirit, drawing a picture will become elaborate and beautiful and detailed. But when a child is not in spirit, that's when you see a lot of this, a lot of mixtures and colors and messiness. Children have an impeccable ability to do some really wonderful things. But it's the same thing with your teaching ability. It's the same thing with that little kid that is marking with the crayon like this. If you come into your classroom and you are not dealing with the idea of being in spirit, there is nothing that's going to inspire you that day. 
and your teaching will be like that scribbled up drawing. Yeah, in close. I know that it's really easy to love the students that are well behaved. It's not as easy to love the students that are not as well behaved. A circle of courage school is one where you can walk into that building and uh, ask a child, is there somebody in that building that loves you? And get the right answer right away. I know that you're capable of loving the troubled ones. And it's quite possible that you may be the only ones that do in some situations. But it's inside of those relationships, I believe, that we approve the graduation rate. It's inside of those relationships with those troubled kids that we get to prove to the rest of the world that even though Canada has a difficult history, we are capable of doing better in this country. It's how we prove that even though education was once used as a weapon against Aboriginal people in this country, schools of today can be places of healing, places of honor, places of coming together, places of equity. So I would sure like to thank you for allowing me to be a part of your community. It's a real honor for me to be surrounded by good people like yourself. Please keep being leaders in the area of Aboriginal education as you have been, and equitable education as you have been. Thank you so much for your time. It's your voice. Take a while.